Is is that prototype built? Yeah. Okay. Okay. For people who are joining the live stream, we are talking about audio functionality for the upcoming version of Wolfram Language. I am subdued today because I have a cold. Um. So, all right, let's get going here. So, what what should I be looking at here? So. Well, so first of all, the audio GUI, there's been a lot of, you know, quality improvements and simplifications. It now works in cloud. Oh, it does? Yes. Does it work yeah. in the ex existing cloud? It should, yeah. And the nice thing is that it's the same code of essentially no branching. It's So if I say here, um, hello, hello, hello. By the way, I'm not totally wild about the... Um, uh, that gray stop button. I don't really understand that gray stop button. Why is it gray? Uh, in the audio capture, you mean? Yes. Um, Why is it gray? Why isn't it black? I mean, it's not grayed out. It should be, you know, it is the thing you press next, right? Yeah, I th let me check. Okay, seems wrong to me. We set this zoom, hold on a second. I'm going to try to set this to... How do I do share? share I, think, sound. I think you should set the um, the default. Uh, yeah, the dollar default audio output device. Yeah. Uh, Can you, you couldn't hear any of that. I couldn't hear any no. of that. Okay. Well, okay, just, that works. Oh, it's already set. Then you probably need to share the audio as well. When you share something, there's a button. Oh, yeah. You yeah. I, I just checked that button. I just checked that button. For Zoom? Yeah. In Zoom, okay. I just checked that button. Uh, no, it's when you start a new share, you will not find it in the process. I know, I know, I know, I know. I just did yeah. that. When I started to share, I stopped the share. I pressed the button that says, when it in the share, it says share computer sound. I checked it. Okay. Maybe you can try re-recording and uh, okay. because right, maybe right. that is with the old, old, old device. What the heck is that? Again, prototype. Uh, there are so there is some work on devices in prototype that yeah. Okay, so can I record or not? Uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. That should not be a problem. Hello, I'm recording now. Look, that shouldn't be gray. Okay. Just shouldn't be gray. I mean it's wrong for that to be gray. Okay, we're not hearing anything. Are you hearing anything? I'm not nope. hearing anything. Are you actually recording? Can you do an audio plot of that? But it seemed to it seemed to have some signal inside it. Hmm. Oh. Um, the default audio input device will tell us what the situation is. I don't know what that is. Yeah, so maybe you just want the computer microphone or something. And, How do I set that? Um, Dollar audio uh, input devices. Display audio, maybe? Well, you might try the Zoom audio device as well here. That might pick up your microphone, hopefully. Okay, but, but why are there two display audio things here, and how would it distinguish between them? There's a good question. I'm not sure what happens with devices that have the same reported name. They are different, but if you input the display audio, I don't know which one would be chosen. Hello, I'm now trying to record again. By the way, it doesn't encourage me that there's no... Um, yep, that is not a good sign. It probably will not have worked. That is very obnoxious. Dead. Okay. All right. Let me let me go and look in the cloud here. Um, yeah, you you might just want to do an audio generator of white noise just to check that that works because audio capture. I'm not sure if it is enabled or not in the cloud. Why doesn't the auto complete? Um, good question. Uh, we'll have to check with audio autocomplete people. 
there are a lot of usages in audio generator. That's probably why the auto autocomplete needs to be uh, it needs to be fixed. And, yeah. Uh, fixed, yeah. For for screen ones, yeah, we'll get that fixed. Okay. Yep, very loud right. and very clear. Okay. Um, okay. So now, in the production cloud, you're saying that if I go here and open new notebook, why is this so slow? Okay, if I say audio capture, no, it didn't work. So what's audio, the story here? Audio capture is not yet supported on the cloud. But if you do audio generator or example data of any audio, that should work. Pretty slow. What's it doing? Okay, that doesn't strike me as working. That was not good. Right. And then, okay. Uh, okay, so that was bad. You, you saw what it did, right? The was rendering slow. was super yeah. slow rendering. My right. connection temporarily was out. I did not okay. see. Well, it just it didn't render properly. Okay. So it was very slow to render. But you're going to make audio capture work, right? Yeah. Okay. We have just to figure out exactly how to. I mean, we can connect through, uh, I think, Java to the output devices. So I'm sure we'll be able to do the same um, to the input devices. Why is this so slow? Look, that rendering is slow too. Hello, I am a computer. Good. Ah, we crashed. See that? What? Crashed. Well, okay, we'll have to test uh, the cloud more often. It, it should be in the test suite for the cloud. So they should already be finding that this crashed. That time it didn't crash, but the border at the bottom is broken. I don't know why it crashed that time, but it did. Okay, so something to look at, right? Yep. Mm -hmm. Also, you got to figure out what to do with the two identical display yeah, audio so input devices. We are in the process of switching to a different backend for playback and device management. Okay. Um, so hopefully, I mean, th there is an obvious solution just to append a, a, an integer to the uh, devices that have the same name. That that will solve the problem immediately. But yes, we had not. Okay, uh, so now, yet. now we're going to do speech synthesize of my thing here. And now what am I saying here? I'm saying speech speak style. I don't like that name. No, 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 yet. no, 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 it's not that. Speak style, speak style is kind of like style. So that's like, we'll, we'll dig into that shortly. But first of all, let's use a, a higher quality speech synthesizer. And that's currently, I believe, method. Okay, but but so what does that, okay, what, what, what do I say here? There's no autocomplete. No, no, it, this is just hooked up in like yesterday. Do you have today's, is this uh, today's prototype? I don't know. Looks like it's yesterday's. Okay, so maybe if you say method goes to IBM Watson, for instance. All one word? Yep. It will probably take you through authentication, though. We are that will be an unpleasant ex experience for now. Exactly, yeah. Okay, hopeless. And 
please, when it when it errors out, get it to not produce garbage like that. Yep. This is just very recent. If you want to listen to it, so one thing is that this is one or two yeah. two generations ahead of the speech synthesizer, the generic speech synthesizer that we have that ships with a binary. Okay. So I mean if Carlos shared it or someone else that has a... doesn't matter. I, I, I've heard these things. They're better. Okay. Yes. You know, are there any that we can build in or are they all external APIs which require... They're all external APIs. Do they require yeah. independent API keys for our, all of our users? Yes. Okay. So we need to talk to partnerships and see whether any of them we can make some deal with. Okay. So there is... the Again, this is still future development. Uh, there are some neural nets that do a speech synthesis, but the import of those, uh, Tushita is working on a part of one of these nets, the wave net vocoder. But yeah, it will have higher quality. It will have also much, much higher computational requirements. Yeah, well, so, that's life, right? Yeah, exactly. And, okay. But it is, it is in the future. It's not something that we can have right now. I, I don't really care about these things that are external services that require separate keys. I don't think anybody's ever going to use them. I mean, it's amusing, but I don't think it's really useful. I mean, the one option is to have something with uh, service credits, potentially. If we have I know, but that requires a keys. deal, right? That requires a deal. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Okay. But, but these things where you can just go there and you get your own key, I just don't care. I mean, you could just do that. I think with... that the proper way to manage it is to not have to do it each session. If you don't want to use it, you do it once, and then that gets stored as your credit. I know, but 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 then you're still you've got an account and you've got a subscription to some outside service, and it's a big complicated mess. Sure, I, the, I just don't think anybody's going to use it. Yeah, Roger, the current authentication with what Stephen had pop up, it's going to save the credentials, but setting up all of those accounts is. Yeah, it's incredibly non-trivial, and it's not clear. It's probably not free, and it's probably, you know, you're paying three different vendors, and it's a big mess. It's kind of not what we're going well, Most for. of them start free, but yeah, if I you want to use it. It doesn't matter. I mean, it's, it's um, yep. I just don't think it's useful. I think it's not a good, I mean, other than to know what's possible, I don't think it's very useful. Okay, in any case, okay, what is speak style? So uh, go to that page. In in the um the ref guide. In the actual ref guide or in yeah. the no, doc it off in CVS. Yeah. In doc source. Tools. Yeah, yeah, source. Yeah. So what this can do, um I think one of the big things there is kind of thing called prosody. It tells you how you pronounce things. Yeah, I understand. Well, why aren't these capitalized? So what we did is to do, instead of doing, well, they could be, first of all. Yeah, they yeah. need to be. Yeah. No, no, they, they probably should be. Second, but you see that there's one speak style that is, a, there's a lot of things that you can style with this one, as opposed to having a symbol that says, Emphasis, another symbol that says break. No, I think it's a good idea, but I think the way it needs to work is some association. I mean, I don't think it, I think it should be speaking style, probably. Okay. Um, and, you know, it's a string followed by, and then presumably it's a style which could be specified as, you know, emphasis goes to seven or something. And I think this or, is the current imp yeah. implementation. That's how it works. Okay. Okay. Except capitalization, of course. The big mess is that this maps to the SSML, which is some XML format for speech synthesis. The problem is that every service has its own twist in it. So it's not very okay. standardized. So, so let's, let's get some very basic things. Obviously, export to SSML should work. So the one thing that uh, is curious is you you don't see X SSML files. You see SSML strings is the most common use well, case fine. for so these then things. it's export yeah. string. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, 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 absolutely. We are able to convert between one and the other, between speak style and, and XML or SSML, however Okay, but, but fine. But then those are export formats. So SSML will show up as an export format, right? Yes. And an import format. Yep. And in the import format, it will return a symbolic speaking style thing. 
Is that correct? I think that's yep. the plan. That's, okay, yeah. so what what if I want to put together a so if I say speech synthesize, so if I say speech synthesize and then I say here table uh I squared I to five or something. Oops. So I'm assuming that this will say the list one, four, nine, sixteen, twenty-five. Okay, so it's saying the list. Yeah, this right. is based on spoken string at the moment. No, no, I understand that. But how would I get a series of things where I say one, two, highly emphasized, right? How do I do that? How do I get something which has different pieces of speaking style for different parts of the, the thing? So if you look at the second usage in the box of speak style, you can see that this can be nested. Uh, the first argument of speak style could be a list. So you could have either list of string and then speak style with a different emphasis, for example. Hmm, I'm not sure I'm keen on that. So the point is you need to be able to um, nest this kind of expression because of as you said, you, you, you might need... Uh, right, the question is whether speech synthesize, if given a list, should just concatenate the things together. If it you know has the speak style, Head, I would say yes. Yeah. No, 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 no. Without the speaking style head, because what you would want okay. to have there is the following thing: you want to say speak speech synthesize of hello, you know, speaking style. Uh, yeah, yeah, I see what you mean. And that one, and I would argue that there are some single word things emphasized or something that you should support here. Sure. That doesn't seem unreasonable. And actually, we might have discussed that already. So the issue with this is how do you distinguish between these two behaviors, right? Uh, because you might just want to say the list, whatever, in some cases. But in the second case, you said you just want to say hello and then join the various. So that having a speaking style had at the beginning, but different. I know, but that's a pages. hack. It's a hack. It's a hack, and it's not a good idea. The list a comma b comma c. That's horrifying. Did you hear what that said? Yep. Mm -hmm. That's truly horrifying. So the. Should okay, you ever be able to have it say the list? I I think that there could be a way of doing this. Okay, look, we could reuse something like verbatim. Okay, so, to be that very corner case, because I don't think anybody's going to care about that case. See what I'm saying? Sure, sure. Yeah, I agree that no one's going to care about that case. Um, the one issue that I can potentially see right now is uh, if you want to nest, you have speaking style you. If you had two words, then you still want to be able to have a list of two things. So you absolutely. Have... So, so, so I... both speech synthesize and speaking style can take a list as their first argument. Yeah. So speaking style already that is already. Similar. I understand that, but I'm yeah. saying speech synthesize. I think at the top level should be able to do that too. Okay, that that's fine. If we decided that's the default behavior, that seems right. And then you okay should try me. and support like verbatim as the way to. Yeah, get the old behavior. It's a little weird, but I think we can reuse it here. Um, it's a little weird, but it is a very good use of it in this case. Okay, voice style data. What is that? the thing that tells you which kind of voices you can use for speech synthesis. Okay, we went through this before. Services. What's that? Yeah, there is not there is nothing new there except that when we are hooking up to external services, now you can get voices for those services as well. Okay, so if I say this, for example, if I if I do this one, Fiona, so are you saying that I can speech synthesize Fiona here? Mm -hmm. Correct. Okay, so what would I say here? I would say comma. you can just say Fiona if you want, or you can use the full specification. The list one, four, nine, sixteen, twenty-five. I think she's Scottish. 
<laughs> that sounds like pretty it. good, doesn't it? Yeah. Mildly Scottish. Now, if it's the wrong language here. It will just speak in a weird accent. The list satu, empat, sembilan, enam belas, dua puluh lima. That wasn't a strange accent. That was a translation. Yep, because those are numerals rather than um, actual strings. If you wrote one, two, three, that would just be there. Would be no there is no translation, is what I'm saying. Because the, but the numerals are, are because they were recorded. Is that what you're saying? The point is they they speak style uh, spoken string transformed that list into a string with numbers inside. Like the list quote, number pitch characters. Curve, quote, quote, roots, quote, quote, sleeps hot, quote, quote, Joe Platt, quote, quote, interlocutor, quote, quote, Joe Latte, quote. Again, here you have a list of words, so you might, you might want to string join those. That may be what is happening in this one. Well, I got to riffle them if I'm going to do that. Yeah, sure. Um, let, let's just say... Oh, for goodness sake. <laughs> Not ideal. <laughs> What's that? Not ideal, I would say. <laughs> All these weird characters. When do we get to have... Um, um, when do we get to have phonetic alphabet? So this is kind of what... Uh, uh, the, the speak style also supports some, uh, in some form. Yeah, let's that. see what this sounds like. Is a country in Southeast Asia between the Indian and Pacific Oceans. It is the world's largest island country with more than. Quite charming. Is a country in Southeast no, Asia no. between the Indian and it? Pacific Oceans. It is yep. the world. Okay. Okay, it's quite charming. There is no translation as you have. It's just. No, I understand Indian. that. Yeah. I understand. Okay. Okay. Okay, so now if I take this and I say speech recognize. Oh, that will be interesting. And now, okay, let's see what happens here. Why is it? By the way, this is still not a correctly standardized box. This is what we're working on. Well, Julia mainly is working on standardizing as much as possible all these boxes. The problem is that we don't really have a standard at this point, right? Uh, NetTrain does one thing, Classify does another thing. <laughs> yeah, I know, I, I know, I know. But, yeah. but we are working, like... yes. Julia I is. I think that was very that. respectable what Speech Recognize did for that, by the way. I am actually I'm more surprised than anything. Yeah. Okay. Well done, Speech Recognize. Uh, okay. Let's go on to speech interpreter that if we can do that. Yeah. And if it's, let's see if it is in the prototype or not. It should be. If it is not, I can share if you'd prefer that. Well, here, let, let's, so what I've got to do is I've got to say speech synthesize. Indonesia. And then I've got to say speech interpreter Correct. of country of that. Yeah. Ta-da! Yeah, and at the Very moment, cool. there is nothing particularly convoluted. It's just recognizing what, transcribing the, the speech and then essentially passing to interpreter. Okay, but now if, if what I did here was... Um, uh, you know, let's say I did this. Okay, that's pretty fine. I understand. So it's really doing two steps here. It's yes, it's nothing. It's nothing particularly new, but it is a convenient shortcut, I would say. Okay. And those futurized usages, those should already work. 
not all uh, interpreter categories are sensible. Why, because, why on earth did you have semantic expression and things like that? I don't think you want that. Yes, a, no, a, actually that is exactly what we want because, for example, if you say one, it will not be transcribed as a, a number digit. It will be transcribed as O and E. So you always seem to want to prefer the semantic number. Semantic expression, I agree, is probably not useful, but semantic number is... Well, semantic expression might be, let me try doing this. I mean, if I say... Um, speech synthesize of um, synthesize of let's say if I say x squared plus y squared there it will use the speak mechanism right correct wow that's not right I am still blown away that it did something sensible. You, what, you, what you might want to uh, check is what the output of speech recognizer of that is. Let's see what it was understood. Yeah, something like this, I do not expect speech recognize to perform well because the language model well, it it not. why did it miss the X? That's a good question. Um, this is definitely not what the language model is expecting. It has never been exposed to this kind of uh, speech. Okay. Okay. Um, what you could do maybe, which is ugly. No, you probably don't want to do it. Never mind. Okay, well, I think this function is very nice. I mean, I think it's some... Um... Yeah, so one thing that I think is a, a place that this might turn out to be interesting is places like form functions. I agree completely. I was about to say that. So these, this is the, the big, I think, area where this shortcut while so that's where... is useful. Yeah, I mean, so... To me, I was always thinking that we would have, just like we have form function, that we would have some kind of voice function. Oh, okay, where you interpret the... Result. Well, where on the phone, for example, the mm -hmm. thing is just, you know, it's like a, a, a Siri button or something. Mm -hmm. But I don't know how it works if you have... Um, I mean, by the time you have multiple fields it's a bit clunky to have to press the microphone button on each field right because that's what you what what is the ux that you're imagining here i mean to my mind the better ux would be a series of form pages in which it's saying say the color now boom mm -hmm. you say it i say see. the you know that is one way or if you have one page where you have per each question per each thing you have a button that while it is pressed you're recording but, this no, but is how is it going to go from UI. one thing to another? Yeah, I think it's much better to go through where where what you basically have. Look, if you have a form, this is something we need to talk to, I guess, Ricardo and Carlo about. Mm -hmm. Because what we'll need is a form that has speech interpreter as the interpreter. Yeah. Right? So, so right now, form can take interpreter arrow something or another. Um, and this is now a speech interpreter, but it needs some separate UI because the typical thing will be multi-page forms where, you know, it says, it, it just says, say the color now. Yeah, you yeah, know. some kind of automated call uh, thing. Yeah, that seems... Actually, like I mean, solution. okay, so, so, so another possibility is the pure voice version where it's saying, say the color now. And then it lets you say the if if we can do that on the phone side, say the color now, you say it, say the you know the amount now or something. See what I'm saying? Yeah, yeah. yeah. And, and all of these say question. can be user customized the way strings provided by the user. Yes, so, I mean that that yeah, would yeah. be a um, you know a voice function basically, yeah. where the thing is initiated once you say go. You know, yeah, it just goes through the whole form. Right, as a voice, as as something with voice. 
Yeah. As I said, the other option that I see being practical is this kind of mixed interface. Where no, I think the mixed interface is interesting too, but, but both of these require yeah. UX no, no. specifications. Absolutely. Absolutely. So can, can you get with Parth to talk about the UX for the apps? Because that's sure. going to be a necessary piece to this. So um, one question on that. Are we What parts of this are we planning to provide prepackaged? And rather than just providing the ingredients and the user letting letting the user build more on this. Um, just a minute. Um. So are you just envisioning... Sorry, maybe. Just a minute. Yeah, yeah, sorry. Um. Just a second. Sorry, keep keep talking. Um, yeah, my question was, uh, what part of this voice form do we want to provide the user? We want to provide the full package, or do we want just to provide parts for it, of it? What do you and, mean? I think like, we want to provide something which makes it easy to do. Okay, so something just like do it. voice form, and then a bunch of fields, and then everything will be will happen automatically. Voice function, I think. Voice it function. Be. I okay. mean, we designed this like three years ago or something. Um, although I think that this version is, you know, so it's voice function, and you basically have a prompt, and then you have an interpreter from that prompt. Yeah, and so, then what we need is is in the I didn't understand that you know so so the whole thing is a voice interaction. I see. So, so more of a co almost a conversational agent, but like very limited, more focused towards the interpretation. Mm -hmm. Well, I mean, the fact is, we should be able to do a conversational agent, and we should figure out how that works through these functions, mm -hmm. right? Okay, that is an interesting. And you are envisioning this this interaction happening both in a notebook and on a website, for example? I think more on a phone. Okay. I mean, I suppose also on a website. I mean, it needs some UX design. Yeah, because I, I don't I, I have no I idea think the how notebook to case do this on is, a phone, right? I know. That's why I told you to yeah, talk yeah. to Barth, who knows about that stuff. Okay. Or who can connect you to the people who do know about that stuff. That sounds good. Other people. Um, I think the notebook case is amusing, but not all that important. It seems reasonable. Um, we may as well want to have validation step for voice. I don't know if form function, API function have that. API what do you function, mean? probably not. Something like, did you mean Italy? Yes. Some, some yes, I understand. Yeah, that, that didn't, that doesn't happen. You're right, that that isn't a thing uh, a form function actually doesn't have that. That's an interesting point. I mean, it, it does when there are multiple interpretations, it can do that. Mm -hmm. you, you know what I'm saying? So it has a UI for checking the interpretation. But you're right. This this I mean, this needs some design. And it seems to me there are three cases here. One is the multi, the form with many entries, some of which are voice enabled or even all of which are voice enabled, so that if you press the microphone button, you can speak to it. That's case one. Case two is the conversational assistant thing that uses, that is essentially a loop, probably using ask, to go around doing different things with voice. And the third case is probably the, the voice-based form filling. Making sense? Yep. Which is more the voice, you know, maybe it's really called voice form function, where it's just like you're 
describing things where it's a fixed, I, I don't know what the interaction between that and ask should be, but there's probably a simple case where you're just filling in three parameters or something, and it's just asking you, you know, please tell me this, please tell me this, please tell me this. And you fill those in, and then it goes and uh, goes to the payload and takes whatever action it needs to take. Okay. Um, Sounds reasonable. Spoken form function or voice form function? No, I would think it would be voice form function or voice function. Okay. Some questions around a live stream. A great example to add for 12.1 net training and net to decompose a single audio channel into multiple voices. We, we there have? is an interesting application. There are several um, papers that present something like that. And one of these papers uses a unit to do that, which is something we can definitely have in our system and train easily in our system. But we haven't had the resources to do that training. Yet. Okay. But it is something that we, and as I said, it is something that is present in literature and is something that we can do with our system. As I said, looking at units is uh, my suggestion for something. Okay, I'll training a net for wave to MIDI transcoding. So we already have a limited version of that. If you go to pitch recognize, that is essentially what it does. Right? Yeah, right. Um, but doing it for the full thing. Have, that is a non-solved problem. There are some very good papers that do polyphonic transcription of piano music, but it's limited to classical music played on piano. So it is okay. one very small subset. Right. Fair enough. Has anyone ever integrated Mathematica into an automated phone service? I think the answer is no. I wonder whether there's an interesting use case for that. Um, you know, back in the day, you might remember MathSource. Maybe none of you remember MathSource from before the web, 1989, when we were first trying to get people to download things. There was a phone-based way of doing that with touch tones and so on. Very bizarre. I definitely do not remember that. Yeah, well, right. It's a it's a <laughs> pre um uh yeah, I mean the the whole thing about DTMFs and you know recognizing touch tones. I don't think we have that, do we? Do we have a touch tone recognizer in our no, no we don't. I don't know that it's worth having it in modern. I, I I would say probably not. Yeah. Because I it's not it's something a... that is difficult to build with just computing uh spectrograms. No, I understand, but if it's an easy, I think it's a good thing for the function repository at least to have a little. Okay, that is the, the I would I would agree. Yeah, I don't think it's worth having in a system, but as you said, function function repository that seems like an interesting. Yeah, I mean, I don't think I, I mean it's it's funny how the world has changed in the last thirty years because you know that was a big deal back in the day, but not anymore. Okay. I think we do have some examples of that in the example notebooks. Why don't we like package it so it's a DTMF recognize or something yeah. or touch tone recognize? Um, so you can just give it a sequence of touch tones and it will recognize it. I think that would be useful. Okay. That seems um, completely sensible. Okay. Mohammed on a live stream mentions Adobe Project Voco has worked on neural net that synthesizes speech from a voice. It would be nice to have, but the synthesizer speech from a voice. You mean, you mean a uh, style transfer on a voice? Yeah, correct. Yeah, yeah. That's what the Adobe Project does. And there are some things that, so remember how I was, I was mentioning that Tushita is working on a part of um, importing a net to do speech um, synthesis. Now, the nice thing is that this speech synthesis bit is um, separated. It has several components. One is the vocoder. One is the generator for the MEL spectrograms. And this generator for the MEL spectrograms can be conditioned, which will determine how the resulting voice will sound. Okay. So if everything goes well, that might uh, help us in that regard. That'd be cool. So in other words, you would learn from one voice what the conditioning of the MEL spectrograms should be, and then yeah. you can translate one voice into another one that way. Well, more than this, it's, it would not be a complete translation. That would be a, a kind of a lie. It would be a resynthesis. You would first recognize which words, words were spoken, and then you would synthesize 
conditioning on some other voice that you want to use as target. Okay, but I mean, then, then what you're saying is that in addition to these voices here, right, you're saying that you could have a custom voice. I think this net would allow that, yes. Okay, so then what you're saying is that speech synthesis, speech synthesize, its second argument could be some kind of... Uh, Example data or something. Well, no, I'm not thinking... Yeah, I mean, right, but what would it look like structurally? What would the... It would be some kind of voice... I would voice say style that, function or something. I would say that you could even just dump all your data into it, right? Just make it sound like this. No, I understand that, but you don't want to do that every time. You want to have a voice Fair. style function Fair. that comes out of that. So you want to basically train it to generate a voice style function. Yeah, so the, the conditioning from what I know about this network is just a vector, right? You, you give it some audio data, this will produce a vector that will be fed as one of the inputs to the synthesis. So the information about the voice is compressed into, uh, I don't know. No, I, I understand all of that. So, so what I'm saying is it's like a feature extract, right? Exactly. So what you're saying. Exactly. Right. So, I mean, in a sense, to get the, I mean, you just need something which is pre-set up to feed into speech synthesize. And that sure. might be a voice style function or it might be some feature extract. Or, or voice something. style object. Or, yeah. yeah, probably a voice style object. Yeah. Yes, that's right. That's yeah, but as I said, this is in the future. We are only working on the import of one part of this project. So this, okay. we'll see right. how long okay. it will take. Okay. All right. Let's try the next one. Speech cases. So what you're saying there. So okay. So if I say speech cases of, um, uh, now if I if I do this, this is going to be a, um. You have uh, the next cell with the speech synthesize might be an, a good input for that. Yeah, I know, I know, I know. I'm just going to give it a bit longer, oh, okay. more stuff. Yeah, that might take a bit more time to recognize, but yeah, that's and let's be let's be kind and not give it the poor <laughs> Indonesian woman. Um, why did that go so quickly? Oh, synthesis is very fast. The problem is recognition. Okay, percent fifty-seven. Then, so we're now what we're going to say is. Speech cases percent fifty seven, and then we will say here something like quantity. Yeah, that I mean, we'll see what happens, but that should work out. As I said, recognition is always heavy without a GPU. What is finalizing language output? Is that running the language model? Correct. And now what's happening? Now it's doing text cases or something. Yes, correct. Maybe you want quantity goes to interpretation. I do. Oh, but that will it I don't think I'm not sure how much caching is happening. Maybe that is something that we want to improve on. I don't know how much caching you really, I mean, to, to want yeah, to do I'm the same sure. thing again, doesn't seem, I mean, I think what's going to be bad here is that there's going to be incompatibility between the progress monitors, but that's a minor mm -hmm. issue. I mean, we have the, the, the framework in place to do some caching in speech recognized, but as you said, it, it doesn't yeah. seem that purposeful. That's pretty damn impressive, if you ask me. Is if it correct? You, well, that, that is... Uh, Oh, it looks correct. Really accurate. Yeah, especially if you consider that this is just a bunch of neural networks stacked onto each other. I think that's rather With impressive. No human guidance except for the training. This is pretty good. Very nice. Cool. Okay. Why can't they recognize that it is speech before deciding how to do it? We don't really have any good way of recognizing any something is. But well, why don't we just moment. build a classifier that recognizes yeah. speech? I bet it's very really easy. But the point is, you could use this method for other things that are not speech to get different effects. I'm sure because you could, but I, I yeah. still think that by default, we should recognize whether the thing is speech. Okay. I mean, sh we could. I mean, it's I, like an I, audio I, identifier I, application. It is. 
the problem is that you have to run some kind of neural network before even... I, I understand, but I'm, I'm saying let's have it be some really lightweight thing because I, I predict that speech or not speech, it's going to be very easy. I mean, the okay, spectrograms have, are totally enough different. Data. We have enough data to, to uh, verify this assumption. I think it is a reasonable assumption. Okay. So, I mean, we could use the audio identify yep. data set or something to just exactly. try and make a very, very, very cheap classifier. That was, that was, the, that was my idea, yeah. Right. Sounds sensible to me. And then method our automatic can decide what to do. Okay. And we'll measure the performance and see if it is. Fine. But I, I think you can get it done in milliseconds. Yeah. Okay. You know. Okay. Audio instance queue. Ugh. Well, audio identify is such a, a cruddy function right now. Yeah. Uh, the nice thing about audio instance queue is that it is given that the output of uh, audio identify is more vague in the sense that it is multi-label. This queue test is a bit more gentle than just doing audio identify on something. Yeah, maybe. I, I mean, mean, is it a bark? Is it a is it a croak? Is it a yeah? Whatever? Is it an animal or is it an instrument that is something that is easily solved? Is it a bark or is it a croak? That might be a bit more less reliable. Yeah. Um, okay. Well, I mean, I'm not, I, I don't, you know, this is what it is. I mean, yeah. audio identify yeah. is not that impressive. Th there is nothing special about that. It's just, yeah. Audio Since we do have the, yeah, okay. You need to go to audio stream new is linked from there. Does anybody know why we're why these things are are defaultly opening with dynamics every time now? Anyway, okay. Well, so if a page has an audio object in it, that requires some dynamic. I see. Okay, so what's all of this? So this is a framework to play programmatically things, uh, right? So you, you you can start from an audio object, a list of audio objects, or a function uh, to play things, and from a device you will be able to record things. Um, and the things that we are adding... In What's the, the difference in audio capture and audio record? It is not blocking. Audio record is not blocking. You can say audio record of something, and it will go on in the background until you tell it to stop. And you can execute any kind of computation in the meantime. I see, okay. I mean, within reasons, of course. There is a callback, and if you have a super huge blocking computation... Uh, another so audio record when you when you say audio stop it then returns. So it returns a stream and then you can access the recorded audio either by a property or or however you want to call it uh, of the stream or just saying audio of that stream that has stopped recording and that will return what has been recorded. Okay, so this is basically I leave this on. It's recording you know, all kinds of random background stuff. Um, and then, so if, if I left this on, you know, recording yep. all my random, you know, meetings or something, yep. would it would it croak quickly or would it could it record 10 hours of stuff? I mean, if, if Mathematica doesn't crash, it will record 10 hours of stuff. And it will, by default, it will dump all that data online on a file. So it will not kill your memory. Okay. Except if, of course, if the file gets that big, but okay, I will tell your hard drive, not your your RAM. Right, but uh, it's recording at like forty-four kilohertz or something by default. Yeah, yeah, correct. Okay, cool. I'll have to try that. Okay, audio plot. So this one, I. There's nothing uh, yeah. for that yet. Yeah, I don't think it is. There is much to be discussed at this point. Okay. Speech a periodicity. What on earth does that mean? So these these are interesting things, but are very specific, as you have noticed. So these all of these well, the first three of those properties um, come from a vocoder. 
which essentially takes a signal, decomposes it into more simple, almost symbolic quantities, for example, pitch, a periodicity and spectral envelope. And then you can, if you want, you can modify these components and really synthesize um, a, a different uh, speech signal. And this is a nice and convenient way to get this information if you want to. A periodicity okay. gives you uh, information on transients, fundamental frequency. This is another way that we can do pitch recognize essentially that is optimized for speech. I would okay. say the performance of this is very good on speech. But I mean, and, there isn't a, a fixed pitch in speech. No, this is a time, it, oh, it will I output see. a time series, yeah. Okay. And the spectral envelope is also some kind of measure that is interesting, especially in speech signals. This is related to the formants of the speech signal. Um, uh, we have so a number a, of, yeah. Yeah, go ahead. We have a number of comments on our live stream from Bob, who says, what I really like to make is a purely synthetic voice for use in animations or to have a speech over for videos that is different to every other voice. Okay, um, so hmm. there are several alternatives. This vocoder thing is one one the, the classic, the said the classic signal processing route. Um, uh, where but that's and, and your various Mel weightings that should allow you to have a unique voice. Yes, by randomly picking. Yes, by randomly picking, well, not randomly, but by weighing differently the spectral envelope is, is essentially what, what creates characteristic of a voice. If you want to instead do, uh, again, with the uh, neural net, you need the power so we of can imagine net. we can imagine a function repository function that creates a random voice. Well... But well, they okay, won't be very. Is... They they won't be as rich as if you yeah. want it for animation. You want them to have very rich characteristics. This vocoder have very limited variability. It's yes. just not okay. that interesting. The, the... That is correct. Okay. I think we need some 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 kind of richer, you know, richer technology for that. Fair enough. Okay. Another question here: Can you stream audio from the web like BBC Radio and convert it to text in real time? We do have some mechanism, don't we, for getting streamed audio? Yes, we, sorry, we don't get really streamed audio. We can get audio that is on a file on the internet and we can stream it in. But a live stream, currently the only method that you could do to get it in real time would be connected to it as a device, essentially redirecting the, the audio from a browser to a device and then to the device to Mathematica. And you can do okay, this so, with virtual yeah. devices, but it's not practical. So wait a minute. So you go to a live stream. Yep. And I think the goal for us is to be able to have streams in audio as well that's not necessarily connected to a file. Yeah, having right, something. but I mean, is it possible to have them streaming from the web, or is that? I don't even know how that works. I mean, it, it isn't that using the um, what is it called? The the um, oh gosh, what is that protocol? RSTP. Called? What is it? I think that one of them is called RSTP. Okay, but but I mean. I don't know how you connect to that. I mean, so is there essentially a URL that is the stream? I I do not know about this. We have and they're just sending the random UDP packets or something. Yeah. One thing we did now, which is one thing that we already shipped, which is this: um, the first iteration, you could connect sort of to a URL. It would then proceed to download it to a file and then start playing it for you. But this it doesn't is, have to I do that anymore. But it's it's it so it can start playing before it's it has the whole thing downloaded. So I think what Stephen is saying is different. What you're saying is like there is a file on the internet and we can stream the file. I think what he's saying is like some live podcast thing. Or yeah, that's thing what I'm saying. That I, I don't know, I know nothing work. about. I don't I don't know either. Yeah. 
Um, okay, continuing here. Notable person. That's cool. Speak agenda. Hopefully, we don't get ourselves in trouble with that in any, any way. <laughs> um, well, yeah. Unfortunately, we only have two genders in our data set. But yeah, well, that's. Yeah, yeah. I mean, this is the apparent gender based on speech, which is all that one can get from speech. Based on speech and the data set that we have used, I guess those are the, the limitations of the right. result. Um. Okay. Speaker descriptor. What is that for? So we already have some features, some audio features that you are computed automatically, which is the real powerful use case of audio identify. I that, understand. So yeah, and here is the same thing, but uh, stemming from a net that was trying to classify speakers. So this, these features will have semantic information on what kind of voice is in the recording. I understand, which you could potentially feed back into speech synthesize to get that voice again. Correct. As I said, that is a whole future development. Okay. Uh, but yes. That is the that the idea okay. is that we, so, we get some semantic information about voice type. So where are we at with diarization? I so uh, as I said, um, the current status of the project is I we have a net trained for speaker classification. We have the same net uh, being fine tuned uh, to optimize this embedding for voices. And now the output of this fine-tuned net is what I am trying to use for speaker diarization. I am getting... So the issue is that I don't have a good way of evaluating the performance of this. Um, I only have qualitative examples at the moment. Um, I am just really using... About that. Uh, Sorry? I'm just thinking about where you could get something where... I have a couple of papers that I found just... Two days ago. No, but do you need something where you have voices and where you know where the markers are between the voices? Yeah, but that, that is also something that is not difficult to construct, at least to get an idea. But I, what I'm looking for is a reliable metric to measure the performance of the relation, which is less trivial than I would. Yeah, I mean, one way to do it, obviously, with the, just the voices is you just take random pieces of speech and you just splice exactly. them together. And we do have the data to do that. And this is what I am doing now. But as I said, I am missing a good metric to evaluate the results. Why isn't it just, I mean, you know, you know where the markers are between these speeches, speak, speakers, and you just say, what fraction of overlap do you have that's correct? I mean, you give yourself a, a weight of, of, you know, plus one or something whenever they agree and minus one when they don't agree, and you just take the integral of that over And, and you normalize, yeah. That is, the problem is if you have two speakers that, if, if for example, the erization, um, recognizes the first bit of one speaker as speaker two, but then switches to the correct speaker. I, I don't know. There is some subtlety right, fine. in these yeah. metrics that I am investigating. So Which you I, need I because you want to, you need to make a loss function out of these or what? No, I want to evaluate if the net that I currently have that I am planning to use is actually valid. Okay, fair actually enough. Actually gives me good results. I think you should get anecdotal information before you dive in. I do. I, I, I already have. It seems okay if you know uh, the number of speakers. That seems to give consistent, 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 decent results. If you leave uh, automatic detection of the number of speakers, that is a bit more iffy. I see. Okay. Um, well, that's that's not totally terrible. Yeah. So, so it was on our list, Stephen. We just for the risk managing the risk for this release, we put it in twelve two. Yeah, but it is something that but I am move working on. It is, it is because okay. it is all of these projects that are voice and neural net related. They are all connected to each other. Each okay. piece is a piece of another project. So. Okay, speaker match queue. It seems to me like with faces, right? What you really want is here's a bag of faces. Which one is this particular face? That seems like that's the most common, you know, real question, isn't it? I mean, what are we doing for facial recognition? Shadi, do you know what, what, what's happening? Oh, I there? see what you mean. I see what you mean. You're for... right. That's the design we settled on. We don't have it yet, but we said, given the set of faces for people one, two, three, which one is the new image? Right. So, I mean, I would have thought the right way to do that is 
Uh, you can either have an association or a list of rules of mm -hmm. the form, picture of face, arrow, you know, name or something, or list of pictures of the face, arrow, name. I mean, you or, could argue that this is nearest, right? Um, or feature nearest. With well, it is, yeah. With, feature. With, with, it some will already be with some threshold for the distance yeah. still. So what yeah. I am doing for that is I am analyzing one data set. I am analyzing the distribution of distances between same and different speakers. And I th okay. think I am getting somewhere sensible. Um, okay, but then, but I'm that. still saying, I think, what is it going to be called? Face recognize or something for the other one? Yeah. Okay. You can, uh, you can open the page that is in the CBS if you want to see the design you said about. Fine, very sensible. I don't understand what method Ara recognizes doing, but. Let's say why we haven't touched this. This is, but then I think the second example is gonna have, or or there is gonna be an example with more than one instance per person. Maybe yeah, I hadn't really thought of that. I mean, I was thinking of individual faces, but yes, this case obviously needs to be dealt with. I've got to go, fortunately, but you guys continue. Okay. Um, yeah, I think we're basically done here. Uh, so what's happening to face recognize? Is that, um, is that making it soon or is this far We haven't in the touched it for a while. Um, for now, what we are wrapping up is better face detection as well as face alignment, which is going to be useful as well for face recognition. Okay, those I are think it's almost pretty good right up. now. Yeah, I mean, it's surprisingly good right now. Yep. Okay, if it can be even better, great. But it seems like these, um, you know, look the the thing here. Okay, the test case is this. Okay, given an employee directory of ours. Can we take one of these, you know, pictures of the company and recognize all the people in it? Mm -hmm. I think that's a good test case. Okay. Uh, all right. Well, very good. Anything else? That was it. When are we going to get to doing music theory stuff? I think that's more important than you guys. I mean, I think it is not so difficult, and I think we should get to it. I disagree with the first part. I agree completely with the second one. <laughs> but yeah, I think after this all speaker-related stuff, I think that is what we are gunning for. Okay. I am very excited about it. So I agree that I... That is, all right, okay, fair I enough. would be excited to do it. Fair enough. But I mean, I, the stuff in Wolfram Alpha isn't terrible, is it? Yeah, but it's not extendable. That is the big issue. Um, in what sense? I, I, I So you really want to build... Um, a framework where you can express complex um, uh, things like scores. That is the goal. That the current building blocks do not extend very well. They, I they see. So good... you're saying what we have is things like scales, but what you want to do is yeah. to have a complete score. We want to, like speak style. We want speak style for music, right? That is the, the goal. We want to be able to express the symbolic representation of a music piece completely. Yes. Yes. So, so that is the 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 issue with what current it, that those will be useful building blocks at the beginning i'm not saying we will throw those away uh, definitely those will right, be but it would be nice to just implement those things because those will be useful in their own right yeah for lots Absolutely. of educational applications particularly Absolutely. and even if you don't yet get the bigger framework having those things if we know how what the design is going to be i mm -hmm. strongly encourage just taking those things yeah and, so we had some discussion about the design things are not 100 percent clear on what the design is going to be so um, All right. Maybe I'll well, you to see we'll be able really to get together. And... What's that? You yeah, go ahead, Shadi. No, I was gonna say we really didn't continue on that project or discussion either, being distracted or focused on other. I, I think you should just take an hour or two and try and see whether you can hash out a basic design. Because if you can, and we can just move over the stuff we have in Wolfram Alpha, that will be a very good start. Mm -hmm. 
So we tried to do that and we couldn't. <laughs> we'll try again. <laughs> Okay, okay, well, yeah. involve me if you want. I mean, yeah. I, I'm happy to yeah. uh, talk about that. Yeah. All right. Good stuff. Anything else? No, thank you very me. much. Excellent. Okay. Nice stuff. All right. Thanks. Thanks Goodbye. to folks on the live stream. Bye.